What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with a quick review of a recently created early farming guide from a hero known as Asteld. His content is located on the top over there, so feel free to check him out. Basically, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I created some exchange information and some information on which teams you should probably work on first, and that's useful information, and I've always play around with the idea of should I make an infographic? Can I make an infographic? Uh, and coming from other games like Marvel Strike Force and Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, where infographics tend to be either oversimplified or not necessarily clear, uh, I, I can say in all certainty that this is probably as close to accurate in opinion and, and as well as in helpfulness as uh, any infographic I've ever seen in my life. So 100% credit goes to Asteld. Uh, check out his information and I'll also put a link below uh, for him and for his graphics. Now, uh, let's take a quick look at what this infographic is and I'll be able to zoom in a little bit at key points so you can see it better. It's just an early farming guide and the way I would recommend looking at it, whether intended or not, is to treat every character on this as somewhat of a priority. So, if you look at the tournament exchange, the highest character on this list is Shan Yu. Great. That means that he is the highest priority character for you to farm. Uh, that's it. He's also the best character in the game, so you would farm him to completion, mind you, not just to unlock, to completion, to seven star, and then once he's done, you would move on to the next one. It's very uh, fluid, so if for some reason you decide to take a small break for one character, maybe you've spent some money, maybe you're doing very well in Sorcerer's Tournament and you want to, uh, you know, expand a little bit and buy a couple of other things because you know you can afford to, great. You can kind of mix and match characters. So Tournament Exchange, 100% agree. Uh, I, even in the order, I believe that Shan Yu is the most important character for all of your growth in PvE and PvP stuff. I believe that Mordu becomes a very important as he's the best tank in the game. And uh, he is a Wilds character that is relatively easy to access, which will help you progress in some of the towers. Uh, Hades, again, one of the best AoE damage dealers in the game, but as we've already discussed, characters that only break into the greatness of Endgame, it's hard to tell people to invest in them early because by the time they do accomplish Hades, or if they do start with Hades, get him up really high, and then a meta shift occurs where either Hades no longer matters as much or uh, for PvP anyway, you you kind of lose out a little bit. The good news is no matter what, when you invest in Shan Yu, you get uh, all three. You get a very good PvE character, a very good PvP character, and a threatening defensive character for like Club War or a Sorcerer's Tournament. Uh, and then it kind of notes out that the other things you want to buy from the Sorcerer's Tournament exchange store is the downtown villains another statement i have agreed with up to this point club exchange jack because he is the best single character in that store uh better than any of the other options anyway that are exclusive and then you can kind of take a look at some of the characters that will help you mickey for an early kingdom character uh Syndrome and demona as they are downtown villains and they are kind of half of a downtown villains team so even as you pick the five downtown villains you want to work towards uh, they eventually can split off you know once you get characters like zerg or uh, dr facilier you can kind of move them off into two separate teams these two characters work well on downtown villains but they also work incredibly well just with villain characters that happen to do the same things to them so great options and again when you see that they're on the same level that kind of makes it a choice for you in that you can you know, farm Mickey, farm Syndrome, farm Demona, farm all three, wh whatever your, you know, resources allow you to do, but it's a pick. They, they're all about equal level. Um, and when you see a, a separation like this, it means your first purchase every time you go to the store is going to be him. Uh, moving into the Heroes campaign, no major notes. The only thing I would add to this is that Dr. Facilier is available at 6C, I believe, 6C Elite. So he would be on this list. I think he's a better character than, uh, well, these two, but because he's so far later in the campaign, you're not gonna be able to access him early from here. So 
this totally agreed big bad wolf is a phenomenal character phenomenal villain character and downtown villain necessity the other two same kind of rules and priority you can work on jangles because you're probably trying to build up a tank for that team and demona even though you're getting a couple of shards here or there from from the club store you can dump your extra energy in if you have it as for the villains campaign this is where we get a little bit cute and clever uh, since the villain campaigns give hero characters obviously jasmine is one of the highest impacts she's a kingdom character she works well with aladdin aladdin is great etc uh, and aladdin is one of the earliest but you can get aladdin from other means he's available in a lot of other places and through events so it's a little bit better to farm the character that has two farm nodes just so you can make a little bit more progress and aladdin doesn't need as much to scale to keep things even jasmine kind of falls behind so being having her a little bit further ahead is good genie is currently one of the better kingdom characters most because it helps you during the jafar event so he's not a terrible character overall he just isn't as good as let's say mulan the problem is mulan is currently unfarmable so why would we make an infographic discussing a better character that you don't have access to uh then we move to the bottom tier and and i do agree judy hops as a lot of people will say like in end game she's great in pvp arena to counter a meta wonderful outside of that she's good and she's not a high priority so keeping her down here is great uh, one thing you'll notice is these exclamation points are meant to uh, say worth unlocking uh, and to some extent i understand that but uh, i would like to again reiterate unlocking a character in disney sorcerer's arena is a moral victory not a success uh, characters upon unlock don't necessarily do much and they don't scale very well with the content you'll be facing both other players and pve content so if you do unlock the character it should be kind of a gift that you receive from opening a random chest or something and it shouldn't be a target you should never start focusing on a character like judy while you're still finishing off investment on jasmine or aladdin up to at least five or six star before you can start worrying about working towards another character once you start working on a character the goal would be to finish that character or come very close to finishing that character uh, maybe the only exception being to change focus in preparation for an event uh, and the last thing to note is the grand campaign now the cool thing about the grand campaign is it's infinite energy the kind of unfortunate thing about the grand campaign is it takes forever to uh, regenerate that energy and it take, costs a lot you know to use it so in here, you'll see that the best characters to farm in Grand Campaign are the, again, downtown villains with a kind of mention of Judy Hops. I wouldn't touch Judy Hops for a very long time. I think uh, this is going in the very right direction of telling you, like, trust me on this, guys. The downtown villains are the PvE mother team. Like, they do everything. They will help you as you go. And they're really good in PvP Arena as you're leveling up and going past the early stages into up to Platinum. And then more importantly, they unlock Zerg, and Zerg is the best single target damage dealer. This kind of addresses who your starting villains are, and just to let you know, these guys kind of get outscaled quickly, so this is the team you end up wanting to work towards uh, until you get Facilier, and it kind of gives you some notes right here. Required for events, great synergy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, until you have access to Facilier, this character can be anything. It doesn't have to inherently be a downtown villain. If you like Gaston or Hook, you're welcome to use them. Just don't use Yzma. It's fine. And these teams, you're going to say, well, there's no healer on these teams. Correct. Unless you have Facilier, there's no healer. But you don't actually need a healer for anything except progressing on three starring a campaign maybe doing a little bit of club dungeon and of course the tower to make sure people are cut off in pvp heals are kind of incidental uh, and spells will probably carry you a good way through whatever the healing you would normally need or damage to make sure that it didn't matter because it only took two or three turns to win the fight that's what you're getting from this and then moving over here check out the starting heroes you've seen my starting heroes video this is 100 percent accurate and then as we said if this is your opening team, um, you have the Aladdin team, Mickey as a kingdom character, and you get to use Sean Yu as one of the best early team game, early game teams you can have. And in the off chance that you need to use this as a complete heroes team, 
you can absolutely use a character like Ariel or Buzz Lightyear instead of Sean Yu, and she'll give you either the sustain or a little bit more damage to progress. Uh, it's okay to work on pretty much any of these characters, but the closer you are towards working on this team, as you've seen in my previous videos, the better off your experience is going to be. Now, as more events come on, uh, this is going to evolve. I'm just uh, grateful to Astel for making a uh, early farming guide that saw, like repeats what all of the good advice is. So again, this link to this is in the description below. Uh, hopefully this will help you guys get a good understanding. I support this. I believe this is uh, a great, just quick glance guide that if anyone were to follow, whether it be accidentally or because they were directed to it by someone whose opinion they trust, uh, I don't think this would lead them down a dark path. I don't think this would be necessarily the worst thing, with the one exception of do not unlock all three of these characters first. It will not help you uh, in any stage. Anyone who's overinvested in characters like Sean Yu will absolutely have a better time than someone who took the time to unlock all three of these characters. At the end of the game, yes, it does make sense, especially if you're alternating, but you're just spending more time working on three different characters instead of getting stronger at any one. It's going to hurt you early where you're going to be building up the most of your resources into the end game. And at the end game, if you stick to one character and move on to the next one, it will take the same time. The only difference is you'll see much more personal growth uh, on the rise as opposed to just being slightly behind. Other than that, uh, comment below and let me know if you guys have been following this. If you've seen this before, give thanks to Asteld for his work. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Asteld underscore. Follow him on Twitter. He has a couple of other infographics. I'm not going to go too much detail into them in this video. I'll probably do another one real quick. But this is the information that I would have done if I had the opportunity, the time, or even the skill to do it. So I'm very happy someone went out there and made this information graphic based on stuff that not only I, but other people have been saying because it's true and it's accurate and it will help the most people. So I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.